Hello, my name is Matthew Vinton. I'm a strategic systems consultant with Quest Software. Today, I'd like to talk to you about applications, service principles, and how to recover them. Before we dive into the how to recover them, let's actually talk a little bit about what they are and what they do and what kind of problems they can cause if they're missing. So applications and service principles are one of the things that it can be a little confusing. And part of that is because of different terminology. I'm using the technical terms, application and service principle. But if you take a look in the Azure Active Directory portal, you'll see that we have no mention of service principles anywhere over here to the left. We have enterprise applications, app registrations, application proxy, all of those sounds like they could have something to do with applications. But what does what? What's recoverable and what isn't? And what do they do? So service principles are basically an instance of an application. They are the specific uh, aspect of an application in your tenant. They're defined here under enterprise applications. So enterprise applications are service principles. You'll notice here there's a great big long list of these. We have Salesforce, we have Quest On Demand, which is one of our products, has a service principle. Each of these service principles has its own object ID, and it also refers to an application ID. The application ID, the actual application itself, is kind of like the template that the service principles generated from. So those templates are listed right here under app registrations. If we go there, we can see that there are applications defined with an application ID. But this is interesting because if you remember, enterprise applications had a long list of service principles underneath of it, and there's only five applications listed here. For every service principle, there has to be an application for it to form out of. And in fact, the application defines a lot of the pieces of a service principle. One really important thing to keep in mind is that applications, the root, the template for the service principles can either be specific to your tenant and defined in your tenant, or they can be defined in someone else's tenant. So you can see here Salesforce is defined here within this actual tenant it's in this specific organization. It's a bunch of interesting things defined here, certificates, secrets, all that good stuff. But alternatively, on demand, for instance, these application IDs are actually defined in Quest's tenant. And the service principle is based off of that. So you can see here we have on demand group management. So this application ID exists in Quest tenant, not your tenant. Now, what do service principles do? Why are they important? And what happens when they go missing or are changed in a way? So service principles can do several different things, but two very common aspects of them are publishing a single sign-on application into the Azure application portal. So that, if we take a look here, for Salesforce, that's how that's defined. This Salesforce is all about provisioning an application with single sign-on defined. You can see it's disabled in this particular case, but with single sign-on, it'd be typically SAML would be set here. And there will be users and groups associated with that. So these uh, the users that would be a part of this group will actually see this and have access to that. There could be conditional access policies associated, which is controls, specific controls over how that application is authenticated to. You know, maybe it requires two factors, something of that sort. So this is basically the, the single sign-on presentation of the application that's defined in your environment. Or another example, again, I'm gonna pick on Quest on Demand here, is Quest on Demand group management. This service principle provides access to our application to your tenant. So it has permissions associated with those. 
It also has users and groups associated with those as well uh, for end user presentation. But its primary purpose is for these permissions here so that you can consent to these permissions and our software as a service application can work on your behalf. If we take a look here inside our dashboard, look at tenants, go, you can see group management has been granted consent. That consent grant is basically an application that gets defined in here, a service principle that gets defined in here, and then the, the appropriate permissions are associated with that. All right, so let's go ahead and let's delete some of these and see what it's going to take to get these recovered. So I'm gonna delete the service principle. Now remember, I can't delete the application for Quest On Demand Group Management, but I can delete the service principle. Now, if I go back here to our application registrations, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this Salesforce application. So this is basically the template. And when I do that, it not only deletes the template, but it also deletes the Salesforce service principle. Remember, those have a symbiotic relationship. You can't have a service principle without an associated application. And if that application disappears, is deleted like I just did, it also takes away the service principle. Let's talk about what it would take to get this back, to put these back the way they were. Uh, applications actually end up in the recycle bin, but not service principles which means that I could go and undelete the Salesforce application, but I would still need to recreate from scratch the Salesforce uh, actual service principle, which is actually a, probably a, a equal or greater amount of the actual configuration since that's you know where we're signing up uh, permissions from, that's where roles are defined, that's where uh, the sample configuration actually occurs. And in addition to that, when I deleted the service principle for on-demand recovery, if I take a look at uh, our software as a service integrated application, we'll see that my consent is now actually broken within here. So now I have a, a non-functioning application that our organization is depending on. You can see here the status is revoked for group management. All right, so let's talk about what it's going to take to put this back. Again, I could record through the, the Azure application, but it's not going to actually do anything. In order to recover service principles, you need a solution like on-demand recovery. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up on-demand recovery, and I'm going to unpack a backup. This is a true backup and recovery system, which means that we take and we look at all the aspects of your tenant, things like applications, users, groups, all these things, and we actually store those. And then when we need to, we unpack that storage and compare the unpacked information with the live information within the tenant. So right now it's going to unpack. And once it is done with that unpack, it will immediately do a differences report that enables us to clearly see what the differences are between the backup and the production environment. All right, now that that's unpacked, let's take a look at the differences report. We're gonna see a whole swath of differences here. Fundamentally, the two that we're gonna recover is restoring our service principles. But it's important to note these other ones. Basically, we also capture the individual properties of each of these. So, you know, today I'm demoing what happens when these are removed, but Equally as important is what happens when the configuration of these are changed or, uh, or uh, damaged in some way. Maybe someone makes a configuration change to service principle that affects users' ability to log in and see. And maybe you don't want to troubleshoot exactly what happened. You can simply take on-demand recovery, do a comparison report, and it will show you the individual differences in the actual service principle itself. In this particular case, very straightforward. They were just deleted. So I'm going to select both of those and click Restore. Now, when I do this, on-demand recovery is intelligent enough to know that on-demand group management 
is based off of an application that's defined in our tenant. It's not going to worry about trying to restore that application. The Salesforce, on the other hand, is an application that's defined in this tenant, which means that it needs to make sure that application still exists. And if it doesn't, it's going to look and attempt to recover that as well. Again, because applications end up in the recycle bin, all on-demand recovery is going to need to do is restore that out of the recycle bin. So it will recreate service principles, and it will go ahead and uh, rebuild any you know, links to those, any groups that are associated with those. Now, one really important thing is we can restore almost everything within a service principle, but we do have limitations around uh, the attributes that are defined in the application, for instance, which is just good behavior on on-demand recovery's part. But also more importantly, we do have a limitation where we're not able to restore SAML certificates. Those will need to be re-uploaded. It's basically like restoring a password. We simply don't have the API access to be able to do that. But everything else with that service principle has been recreated. So now if we go back to our enterprise applications, hit refresh, we're going to see that both service principles are back in place and looking exactly like they were before this happened. You can see there's on-demand group management. And here's Salesforce. If I go into on-demand group management, we can see, for instance, that the permissions that have been granted to this have been appropriately recovered. If I go into Salesforce, we can see that the users and groups that were associated with this have been appropriately recovered. Any conditional access policy has been recovered, any permissions, any roles, all that, with the, again, the single exception of SAML certificates. If we go back here into on-demand recovery, go back to our tenants, we'll see without any reconfiguration, without having to uh, make any further changes and reconfigure my application, the consent has been re-granted because that service principle exists once again, and it exists with the same configuration, all relinked the way it was. Group management, granted, no longer revoked. So that's it in a nutshell. Simply put, service principles are not able to be natively recovered using Azure Active Directory native tools. You can recover applications, but that only gets you um, a certain part of the way. It does not get you all the way. And you need a, a solution such as on-demand recovery to be able to effectively protect yourself against inadvertent changes to service principles, as well as to against inadvertent uh, deletion of service principles. Thank you.